Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com. Um, and this is episode 222 two, two of the Sophie Art Podcast. This little podcast I do about the art and things. And I'm in the same location as I was last week. And this is going to be another walk and talk. But I thought it was a nice little um, thing to show how things change. Because last... Last week it was peeing down with rain, and now it's beautifully and sunny. It's quite strange how. Well, I like it how you can be in the same location, and like the weather changes quite a lot of things, really. So, this one today is another walk and talk, and what I'm going to talk about is. No, I'm not. I'm going to talk about God. Oh, that apple got stuck in the tree. There's an apple in the tree now. Half eaten apple. (coughs) Some of the notes I got for this one is relationship with God. What is God? Energy or entity? alien or robot how are we related to God is it like a parent is it an AI my experience of connecting with God via animals and voices in meditations and dreams God's gender and I'm going to talk a little bit about our ultimate goal which I think might be to become our own God because for the longest time, I believed we were a part of God. I thought what had happened was God had split itself up into, like, you know, infinite pieces. And basically it was a case of, like a puzzle. It cut itself up into puzzle pieces. And each puzzle basically had to slot itself back into the bigger picture. And the end goal was going to be that the puzzle, everyone would get the the puzzle completed and like God would become whole again. And then what would happen is God would do the same thing again. <laughs> Split itself back up. It's almost like the, the whole point of it was just the fun of trying to put the puzzle together. Because you sometimes think, what is the point of doing a puzzle? It's the satisfaction of trying to get it all together. The experience, I suppose. But I'm I'm wondering now, because I've been listening to a lot of Divine Truth with AJ. And on that he says, we are not... We are not... He basically sees God as an entity and like a parent figure. But it's actually... It's got a male and a female. Well, it's not got... I think it hasn't got any gender... But he says it's a, it's like a mother and a father in one being, which is quite cool. So he basically sees God as an entity, like a mum and a dad, and we're like the children. So the way I looked at that was I sort of visualised that as like a tree. Like you've got a tree, and it's like it spreads its seeds all across the grass or something, and then. The tree looks after the, like, oversees the seeds as they grow. But in the end, those seeds become their own trees. Like, they become their own god. So I'm wondering if that's what we're doing. I'm wondering whether we're actually, like, seeds that are growing. And God's been through this, been through this experience itself. Because God was once a seed that became a tree... So what would happen is we would in in the end become a tree and we would spread our seeds creating loads of little um, more gods. But I think it's a lot more multi-layered than that. So I think it's all dimensional and stuff. And it's to do with sort of some reason it's to do with shapes and stuff. 
But I also wonder whether it's some sort of computer thing. Because like, I see God sometimes as a quantum computer. Or something like that, which is... Some sort of... It's, or, or I wonder if it's an AI, like a robot. Because I wonder whether what happens is humans in the end... Huh, <laughs> doggies. I wonder what happens in the end is humans evolve with technology. So what happens is, in the end, we will end up becoming sort of like robots. I don't know whether that is like the ultimate aim, whether it's to become a robot or whether that's actually negative. I'm still undecided on that one. So God could be actually a robot or like a supercomputer. And what it's done is it's, com- it's created a like a, rea- an, a universe. It's created a universe inside of a universe. And it's like overseeing everything inside of the universe. And I wonder whether the aim is to get... It's almost like... It's almost like it's created a... I wonder whether it's created a universe. Very much like a video game. Populated with all these like creatures, and then it basically somehow allows them to become aware of what they are. And once they fully realise, maybe somehow they can come out of the system, almost like a three D printer. So a three D printer could sort of somehow print out one of these creatures into God's reality, and and in that way. It's almost, sometimes I wonder whether what's happened is God is like a computer which was created by humans in the past or something and then the humans got wiped out and all that was left was the computer but the computer was running off some sort of solar energy or something so in other words it, it's always, it can't die so the computer is always on and I wonder whether the computer realised that everyone had died so what it did was it it went into its sort of memories trying to find out what the humans were or something. Um, and I wonder whether it's, some, it's sort of trying to create another version of itself. Almost like it's trying to find a friend. And then what would happen is if you pass the test which is you because if you think about it if that was you you wouldn't want people in your reality who were not loving so as long as the beings are loving they can actually become part of the actual reality something like that I had a weird dream last night as well which I want to talk about and it's going to be linked in with this week's inspirational quote because what happened was on Monday night we did our mastermind with the Ascend podcast and right at the end we started talking somebody started talking about the Bible and it got me thinking about God and our relationship hey little birdies the sound of birds is cool isn't it You see them all bouncing around in the tree. And it got me thinking about my relationship with God. Or the creator. Or the universe. I always used to call it the universe. I'm still not 100% comfortable with the word God. Because I think they've basically turned that into like a bloke with a beard. And God to me isn't a bloke with a beard. But I started thinking, at the, at the time I started thinking, I haven't really got a connection to God. Because AJ, on Divine Truth, says God is an entity. I've always seen God as an energy. But I thought, well, if, God's an, if God is an entity, then surely it must be able to speak like a language. So I want... 
There's part of me that wants to... Buggies. There's part of me that wants to be able to communicate with God via words. I'd like to be able to ask God a question and get an answer in words. But then I start thinking, well, why do I need that? And I went to bed that night thinking about relationship with God. And what I thought, what I realised was God actually talks to you via animals. Really, that's what I'm thinking. So like when you're in the heart of nature, you feel you you feel sort of um, connected to so much bigger. And I've always thought that's like the universe. But I'm wondering if that's if that feeling of sort of connection to the animals and things is God. But what I've noticed is God, animals will always show up just the right moment, like little robins. Robins will show up to me at like the perfect moment, like synchronistically. And I, I wonder whether synchronicities and things like that is how God actually communicates with you. We're going over a really busy road here. Hopefully it's not too noisy. Look, compare that noise there with the sound of the animals before. It's like um, animals are so much... so much nicer sounding. So then I started thinking about... I started thinking about other things as well. And I started realising in my... In some of my lucid dreams... And some of my meditations, especially the first year or so of meditating... I would actually have these voices... Like, almost as if... Somebody was talking on a loudspeaker and it was like echoing around the dream environment or the meditation environment, which it does make me think it's like they're like sort of overlooking the experience you're having. And one of them is a very deep, sort of powerful male voice, which you could sort of um, think it's like a, a father figure. Like a, you know, a very strong, powerful father. And then the other one is a very loving voice, which reminds me of... Um... (laughs) Reminds me of, um, you know, Quantum Leap? On the opening credits, there's a lady that says, um, Dr. Sam Beckett stepped into the Quantum Leap accelerator and vanished. Well, it makes me wonder whether... I've heard that voice as well. Like a, That one for me is like a super loving female. Like a, like the most loving mother you could ever imagine. So I did think to myself, is it possible that these... Because at the time I just thought they were... I thought maybe it was either guides higher self like my higher self or I don't know but I'm I'm wondering now if they're actually if that's actually like God which that would be amazing I remember this one meditation I had I was I was like a little um, person sitting in the palm of like a bloke's hand and that's when the big booming voice came out. I can't remember what he said. I've wrote it all down in one of my meditation books. This was in 2013. So it's quite a long time ago now. But I remember when it, when it said what it said, I thought, who said that? Because it wasn't me that said it. And that was the first time I'd really ever experienced something like that. 
that was quite cool. So I've put my relationship with God. So I do think I actually... I think we all have got a relationship with God. It's just maybe... The relationship isn't the way you think it would be. It's like... And I wonder, well, why... Why doesn't God just come out? If God is an entity, why doesn't God just come out and, and say hello? There must be a reason. So I've put, what is God? Is God an energy or an entity? I actually think God is going to be both. So, like, we are spiritual beings. Bees. Spiritual bees. There's a little bee down here. <laughs> That's quite funny. Spiritual bees. Spiritual beings. We are both spiritual and physical beings. So we're both. At the moment we're physical beings. Because we're inside of the physical. But at night time and stuff we're spiritual beings. When we're in the spiritual. So I'm wondering if God is the same. Maybe God is an entity. Maybe God is an entity outside of this reality. But inside of this reality, God is like an energy or something. Very much like how it, if a spirit come into this world, it, re- it can't really come out and say hello. So it has to sort of communicate with you by throwing objects around or something. Maybe that's what, what's happening with God. It's inside of this universe, God is an energy. And then I've also put alien or robot. So the first thing is, what are aliens? How do we not know that aliens are actually spirit beings? Like, aliens might be spirits. So it might be one of these things where, in actual fact, everything is sort of the same thing. It's just a different name for the same thing. And then robots. So if you look into the ancient scriptures... It really looks like, it it does to me, it looks like they were dealing with genetic engineering, cloning, and some form of like robots. So I've always thought to myself, are we actually, are we actually robots who became conscious and we don't realise that we're robots? So then... Because I've always thought to myself, God, I feel like God is the same as us. So maybe God is a robot as well, but like a super advanced robot. So in the future, when we become God, we'll be, we will be a super advanced robot. So that's all. And then I wonder whether aliens are just robots as well. How are we related to God? Yeah. Is God like a computer and we are sort of um, little AI things, little robots being controlled by the system? Or is God an entity that created us, a bit like a tree with seeds? Or maybe it actually might be... God, the clouds look nice today. I don't know if you can see that. I like it when the clouds have like a white outline around them. So, oh, I'm just I'm just f- trying to work out what what I would think. What do you think God is? My experiences with the animals and the voices in a meditation wouldn't it be nice if you could say God can you that's the thing I've noticed though I only really want to communicate with God when I need something wouldn't it be nice to communicate with God just just for no reason other than to say hello or something yeah imagine being God and all the time everyone's always asking things of you Let's get a bit cheesed off with that. Unless it's a ro- unless it's an AI, which 
Because if you think about it, God, they say God doesn't judge. Well, an AI wouldn't judge. A robot wouldn't judge. <laughs> God's gender. So to me, God is a... I think God is a, is a non-binary entity. I think it's both male and female. That's what I'm thinking. That's why the word God, they've turned God into a masculine word. That's why I've never felt fully happy with that. I like the word creator, because creator, creator is more sort of male or female. So I feel like that's probably my favourite, my favourite word for whatever it is. And then the last thing in my notes is our ultimate goal. I think our ultimate goal is to follow the path of love Transcend the system. Transcend death. I think I think it's to become alive whilst you're dead. Because most people, when they die, are going to think... I think they're going to be dead. But if you can be alive while you're dead, which would be like being lucid, basically, I think the goal is to become lucid through death so that you can transcend death. And then I think what'll happen is you'll come face to face with God. And then I reckon what'll happen then is you'll be able to do whatever you want. You could, if you wanted to, go back into the system and do it all over again. Or you could act, you could actually become your own God. And which then begs the question, are there more than one God? Is our God like a tree and we're like a seed from that tree what if there's a field of trees and each of these trees is a god with with its own children so then you start thinking wouldn't it be fun to go into one of the other god's universes just to see what it's like <laughs> but like if i create if i was a god and i could create a universe mine would be all like anime It'd be all anime, bright colours, like really cool music playing. Yeah, it would be really cool. But then I also think it'd be quite funny. What would probably happen is, if you became your own god and created your own universe, wouldn't it be funny if you ended up creating this? <laughs> That'd be quite funny, actually. You would then you would end up creating the, this. Because you, what would happen is, once you become God, you realise the beauty of Earth. Like, you realise the beauty of suffering. You realise the beauty of all the... All the hardships and stuff. That's what I'm wondering. Wouldn't that be funny, though, if you did? It's a little Sid the Seagull up there. Sydney the Seagull! Hello! Hey, it's like he's um, it's like he's dancing around in the sky or something. I wonder if he's singing. Whee! I tell you, the way um, birds fly around, that to me, they, they are like freedom to me. Hey, three of them look friends. Sydney the seagulls. Do you ever wonder what birds are saying when they're up there? It's quite hard to follow birds. I think that's it for this though. So all that's left is this week's inspirational quote. I've got something cool to talk about. It's one of my... I had a dream last night. 
No, it wasn't. It was the night before. Oh, there's loads of seagulls up there. <laughs> oh, I love seagulls. What happened in this dream was, I was at some sort of party and there was music playing in the background which was You've Got the Love which is one of my... I haven't heard that song for ages but in the... I think it was the 90s or something they brought out like a trance tune and they sort of like remixed that and it, I loved that song at the time I just loved it for like the feeling of it but what happened was I realised when I listened to it like, I listened to it yesterday and today, really looked into the lyrics, I've realised how sort of, um, it's all about God. You've got the love. So what happened was, I was in this dream, and there was this, this music was playing, and there was a bloke lying on the sofa, and I thought to myself, he looks like he's on drugs or something. So what I did was, I looked into his eyes, and I suddenly got pulled into his eyes as if I was getting pulled inside of him. And I was aware of the fact that I was inside of his eyes and also still in the dream. So it's almost like I had two awarenesses at the same time. And I was thinking, can everyone else inside of this dream see that I'm inside of this guy's eyes? And I also thought about how, like... Oh, there's some, there's some cool birds around here. Oh, cool. There's these, like, birds flying really... Oh, I think they live in... There's a shipwreck here. I think they live inside of the shipwreck or something. Hee-hee. <laughs> They're hell of a cool, these birds. I wonder what they are. They're like... They look like little bats. Oh, what was I saying there? Well, what happened was, so I was, I was pulled inside of this bloke's eyes, very much like going into a wormhole. And then, when I woke up, I, the, the song was still in my head. So I remember Robert Wagner, lucid dreaming expert, what he said was, he said, if a, if a song ever comes into your... Huh, there's doggy down there. He's quite funny. He's um, scratching his head on the pavement. He said, if a song ever comes into your dream, you should go and have a look at the lyrics. Because he reckons that the, it's, the lyrics are important if the song comes into your dream. So I actually, what I did was I, um, I downloaded the song and I played it on the way to work. And when I really read, when I read them... It was amazing how it's actually like talking about connecting with God, which I thought was quite fitting, because the last couple of days I've been thinking about connecting with God, and then this song started playing. So this week's inspirational quote, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to read the lyrics of this song. I'm going to try and read them without singing. You should try and do this. Get, get one of your favourite songs... Download the lyrics of it. Try to read the lyrics of the song without singing it. It's incredibly hard. Because what happens is you're sort of... You can't help but sing it. That's what I've noticed. So I'll give it a go. It's also, it sounds quite funny when you... Um, it sounds quite funny when you're... for lyrics sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air I know I can count on you sometimes I feel like saying Lord I just don't care but you've got the love I need to see me through sometimes it seems that the going is just too rough actually I'm going to start that again because I, I think you might not have heard that 
Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air. <laughs> I know I can count on you. Sometimes I feel like saying, Lord, I just don't care. But you've got the love I need to see me through. Sometimes it seems that the going is just too rough and things go wrong no matter what I do. Now and then it seems that life is just too much but you've got the love I need to see me through. When food is gone you are my daily meal. When friends are gone I know my saviour's love is real. You know it's real because you've got the love You've got the love. 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 Time after time, I think, oh Lord, what's the use? Time after time, I think, it's just no good. Because sooner or later in life, the things you love, you lose. But you've got the love I need to see me through. You've got the love. 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 Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air because I know I can count on you. Sometimes I feel like saying, Lord, I just don't care. But you've got the love I need to see me through. I like the bit where it says... Where it says... When food is gone, you are my daily meal. When friends are gone, I know my saviour's love is real. That's sort of what I was talking about last week on the podcast. Because it also says about... Was it... Where was it? It says... Sooner or later in life, the things you love, you lose. That's the thing. In the end, in the end, you are going to lose. Everything goes in the end, and all that's left is you. But if you have a connection with God, well, that's it, isn't it? You're never actually going to be on your own, which is quite cool. I'm going to sing a little bit of this as well. Sometimes I feel like for my hands up in the air. Sometimes I feel I say, Lord, I just don't care. But you've got the love I need to see me through. Sometimes it seems that the going is just too rough. And things go wrong no matter what I do. Now and then it seems that life is just too much. But you've got the love I need to see me through. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the air. 